All right, so now we're back here. We're on the back side of the notes. This is part two. And we talked about rectangles. We talked about triangles. Let's talk about parallelograms. Now, you'll notice when you look at this formula, area is base times height. Well, that's the exact same formula as the area of a rectangle. And if you think about it, a rectangle is just taking, well, a parallelogram is just taking a rectangle and shifting it. So we just shift these two sides. So the area actually does not change. Now, in this problem here, they give you three numbers. The base would be 15. And you might say, well, wait a minute. And I thought base is bottom. Well, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So that's also 15. The height is perpendicular. You're looking for right angles. And the height is right there at 6. Area is base times height. And that would be 90 meters squared. 90 meters squared. All right, now, number 5. Find the area of the trapezoid. Okay, here's the formula for a trapezoid, and this looks kind of confusing. All right, but H is height, and then you have a B1 and a B2. And what those mean is base 1 and base 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So base 1 and base 2. Here's the thing about a trapezoid. All right, let's look at this picture. The bases are the parallel sides. Okay, so base 1 and base 2, those are the sides that are parallel to each other. In this case, it's the top and it's the bottom. Now, it doesn't matter which one is base 1 and which one is base 2. They're the two parallel sides. Okay, so let's see. If we've got the area equals 1 half times the height, I'm going to put a set of parentheses for that, and then times B1 plus B2. We can fill in the B1 plus B2. And B1 plus B2 is inside its own set of parentheses. Okay, so I add those up before I do any multiplying. What we're missing still, though, we're missing the height. Now, in this picture, they actually draw two heights. They draw one here, and they draw one here. So these are both H's right there. So how do we figure that out? Well, one thing you'll notice is that, first of all, in these two triangles, the hypotenuses are both 13. Those are the same. The heights are going to be the same because these are parallel lines, so their distances between them are equal. These two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg. We can prove that they're congruent. And so what that tells us is that this top part and this top part of the triangle, those are the same. All right, so here's the thing. This whole length is 30. The length of the rectangle, though, which is the middle figure, this part here is just 20. So if the whole thing is 30, now this part here is 20. If I take that out, 30 minus 20 is 10. So I take that out. Um, now that's for these two pieces together. And since they're the same, if I divide by 2, what I get is 5. So this is 5, this is 5. Now you're saying, well, how does that help us? We still don't know the height. All right, and that's true, but let me go ahead and draw this picture now. We've got 5, this is the height, and then the hypotenuse is 13. How can we figure out h? Hey, let's do Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus h squared equals 13 squared. 25 plus h squared equals 169. Minus 25, we have to move that. We have to move that to the other side. We get h squared equals 144. Now you can solve it, take the square root of both sides, and what we get, h equals 12. And we're still not done. We have to find the area, so we need to plug that in. There's 12 right there. Now, when we do this, that's 1 half times 12. You could type it all on the calculator. I'm just going to do it by hand. 
30 plus 20, I can combine that. I can add that. That's 50. Now, when you multiply this, you can do one half. You, you, you can multiply these in whatever order you want. I'm going to do one half times 12. Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 50 is 300. Now, this is an area, so it's yards squared. The units of measurement is always squared. Now, that's a good problem. You had to do a lot of stuff just to get to the formula for area. But that's how you have to solve these. You have to go piece by piece. If you don't know the height, you have to find the height. And you have to ask yourself, what do they give me? How can I get what I need? All right, rhombus. Let's talk about a rhombus. Now, a rhombus is actually, it's the same as a parallelogram. You could say base times height. There's a little shortcut, though, and the formula is 1 half times D1 times D2. Now, D1 and D2, those are the diagonals. It doesn't really matter which one is D1. If I want to say the shorter one here, that's D1, and then I'll take, uh, I'll take the longer one right here. That's my D2. So the formula is 1 half times the length of D1 times the length of D2. The reason why this is going to work is because in a rhombus, you have four right triangles. So basically, you're taking four triangles and then combining all their areas. Okay, so in number six, find the area of the rhombus. Well, let's see. Six is this piece here. Ten is a side length. Now, we're missing this other part of the diagonal, but we do know it's a right angle. So if I call that x right there, the hypotenuse is opposite 90. That's 10. That's my c. a squared plus b squared, whoops, I'll call it x squared, equals c squared. Now, something about this, we've already done this formula. Okay, we did it back in number 5 where you ended up with 6, 8, 10. That's a very common right triangle. 6, 8, 10. 10 is the hypotenuse, 6 and 8 are the legs. If I go back to this one, okay, to number 6 here, notice that we have the same setup. 6, blank, 10. Without doing any work, you already know that the answer is 8. If you don't believe me, go ahead and work through it. But x is going to be 8. 6, 8, 10. If you get that kind of triangle, you don't even need the Pythagorean theorem. You have to be careful, though, when you use this rule. 8's a leg, 6 is a leg, 6 is a leg, 10 is the hypotenuse. Okay, so x is 8. Now, the formula for a rhombus, area rom, or rh, 1 half times d1 times d2. Now, one of the diagonals... Okay, if I say this piece is 6, so is this piece. Because in a diagonal, in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect. So this whole thing here, 6 plus 6, is 12. And then for the longer diagonal, this is 8, this is 8. 8 plus 8, that whole thing, 16. So now we can do half of 12 is 6. 6 times 16, you get 96, and it's inches squared. That's the area of the rhombus. And again, you could type all this on the calculator, but when you use the calculator, make sure you're typing what you want. All right, the last thing here, number seven. Find the area of the trapezoid. We're going to do this because there's something really cool that comes out of this when you uh, solve it. Now, there's actually two ways you could do this. You have three triangles. We could add up the areas of all three triangles, and that would give us the total area of the figure. Or we could just find the area of the trapezoid itself. We're going to do it twice. The area of the triangles, now triangle area is one-half base times height. One-half base times height. So, for this top triangle, base and height are AB. So that's one half AB. And also the bottom triangle, 
notice that it's actually the same base and height. It's A, B, so one half A, B. The middle triangle is a right triangle, but it's also isosceles, it's C and C. Now in this case, that's the base and the height. The hypotenuse would be this length here. We don't know that, we don't care. So this area is one half, it's C times C. But if you think back to algebra one, C times C is the same thing as C squared. So this is one half C squared. So the total area, area, I'm gonna say fig for the figure. It's one half AB plus one half AB plus one half C squared. And I can simplify that. I can add these like terms. Half of an AB plus half of an AB is a full AB. So it's one AB plus one half C squared. Now you're thinking, wow, that's not very interesting, Mr. Cavell. Okay, so let me try to make it more interesting. Let's do the calculate the area again, but let's use the trapezoid formula, which is one half height times base one plus base two. Now the height of this whole thing, up and down, that's A and B together. That's A plus B. So it's one half, the height is A plus B, and then times the sum of the bases. But the bases are also A and B. So it's A plus B again. Now, go back to Algebra 1 here. Do you remember doing FOIL or what we call the box method? What you're going to get when you multiply these bin binomials, you're going to get A times A. You're going to get A times B is AB. You're going to get B times A, which is also AB, plus B times B is B squared. So what we get is 1 half. That's A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And if I distribute the 1 half, we get 1 half A squared plus half times 2 is just 1. That's 1AB one plus half B squared. Now you're still thinking, okay, where are you going with this? But here's the deal. If I add up the three triangles, this is my area. If I do the trapezoid, the whole figure, this is my area. But they're the same. They're the same figure. So don't they have to be equal? And the answer is yes, they do. So here's the last thing that we're going to do here. If they're equal, I can say that these, this one equals this one. I can say 1 half a squared plus 1ab plus 1 half b squared equals 1ab plus 1 half c squared. Okay, now, this is real messy, but look at this. Both of them have positive 1ab. What if I subtract that from both sides? What happens to 1ab minus 1ab? We get zero. So that's gone. So that gives us 1 half a squared plus 1 half b squared equals 1 half c squared. Now you got one more step. Let's get rid of the fractions. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. And what that gives us, 2 times 1 half is just 1. So we get 1a squared. And then we get 2 times 1 half, again, is 1b squared. And 2 times a half is 1c squared. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's the Pythagorean theorem. This is a proof of the Pythagorean theorem that this has to be true. In a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's always true in a right triangle. <coughs> now this is a proof. There are tons of proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. This one was actually done by an American president. Not one of the newer presidents, but a couple hundred years ago. Well, actually about 150 years ago. If you can find out the president that did his own proof of the Pythagorean theorem, I will give you extra credit. Okay, so if you go online, <coughs> excuse me, find out which president wrote this proof of the Pythagorean theorem, get some extra points. That's it for the notes.